For a few years now, plenty of statistics and images illustrating the increase of inequality, social polarization and the risk of social exclusion abound in Europe. A lot of the jobs you get nowadays, they don't want to pay you according to the hour, they want to give you £20 a day or £15 a day. Something basically they want to take advantage of this, your position basically. They lost their jobs because of motherhood. And they, or they had real problems with coming back to the labor market. One of my friends was literally kicked out of her job uh, after, after she finished her maternity leave. The other one um, was really struggling. cambiando los gobiernos y si esa cultura no, no, es, no subyace de dentro se pierde cuando entra uno entra otro esto entonces todo el trabajo que han hecho las entidades se queda ahí wünscht sich natürlich dass man gefragt wird bevor irgendwo was hingebaut wird meistens kriegt man es ja gar nicht mit Indeed, traditional institutions and instruments protecting European citizens from social risks have been weakening as a consequence of the profound economic, socio-demographic and political transformations that have been taking place in the last two decades. The protection system called welfare was based on some structural conditions that no longer exist, such as constant economic growth, an expanding number of workers with permanent well-paid job contracts, a division of labor inside families based on gender, an insured family income mainly via male breadwinner, and an increasing supply of welfare benefits and services protecting people from some of the most common risks such as aging, sickness, disability, and unemployment. In this framework, European cities, mostly middle-sized, developed a peculiar social model based on a balance between economic growth and social cohesion that sought to avoid high social inequality and spatial segregation. Four structural dynamics have been identified that alter the social cohesion of cities. The changes in the labor market, like flexibilization and casualization, the changes in housing markets, meaning recommodification and appropriation of the housing sector by private owners, the transformation of family structures, like the increase in work care reconciliation problems as a consequence of growing female employment and the weakening of family solidarity, and the modifications of migration flows, meaning ethnic pluralization with a higher risk of social marginality for the most disadvantaged individuals. The impacts of these objective facts and trends on citizens experiencing them are differentiated. Three groups were studied in the Wilco project, unstable employed youth, single mothers, and first generation migrants. But when I left, I found that I couldn't find a job. Um, I couldn't find any tra other training. Um, I felt like I was just left, really, just pushed into the world with no support of getting any work or nobody would hire me. I moved to London for a year and a half, but things never really worked out. I had a couple of auditions, but nothing too serious. So I moved back to Birmingham. I was working, doing part-time work, catering, bar work, but that's not what, what I wanted to do. Young people without a job or with an unstable one 
share the experience of being on and off the labor market. They also postpone their steps towards autonomy and adulthood. Some even go back to live with their parents. Why is this happening? What are the problems? In the first place, extremely short-term contracts and poor jobs, which reduces the capacity of planning a new household and building a successful career. Temporary employment agencies are regarded with mistrust. In the most fragile cases, premature dropping out of school or preparation failures of schools for their desired jobs, or the segment of market in which they would like to work is shrinking or in crisis. My kids, it's just my kids and my wife. I don't want my kids seeing their dad unemployed. I want, I want to be a role model for them. I want, I want them to grow up thinking, yeah, this is the right thing to do. I don't want them like all the youths nowadays walking on the streets in gangs, going doing street robberies, selling drugs, this, that, the other. Because that's what's going around here most now. There's no jobs. That's what kids are going to do. We had no other option. We either had to go to college and not have nothing to eat or work and not, go, not study. So I think I made the right decision. But like I said, they're saying I can go back into education now. But if I go into education now, who's going to feed my kids? Who's going to look after my family? It's not so simple. In the UK, for one person who is out of work, that costs the state £56,000. And for a young person that offends any criminal type activity, it costs the state a lot of money. So I'm just giving illustrations of what it costs the state when a young person is not engaged. The number of married and cohabitating women who get divorced or split up has increased significantly in most European countries. What are the increasing challenges of vulnerable lone mothers? To face difficult financial situations to access the labor market, to achieve a work-family balance and to adjust working hours to municipal and childcare services, as well as particular or exceptional situations such as school holidays or children's illnesses. These added job-seeking difficulties leads lone mothers to accept low-skilled and low-paid jobs and to give up or postpone their professional aspirations. In fact, women are leading the gender rates in terms of part-time jobs and underemployment. There are single mothers who have the possibility to supplement institutional care with the support of family or solidarity networks. But the mothers interviewed expressed a sense of guilt caused by the fact that they spend little time with their children. Migrant women often even lack the support of the family network. Lack of knowledge and language skills may also hinder them from accessing childcare facilities and other welfare services. When my children were small and I was on maternity leave, uh, the first part, the, the, the maternity leave in Poland is paid, but then when you are not coming back to work, but you can still be on leave with your, with your child, uh, it's up uh, to three years of a child, about, uh, you are not paid at all. So it's like uh, when you have a family, it's like the half of your income is it's disappearing uh, when you decide to stay at home with, with a child. Suddenly, first of all, it is very common to face huge problems with work, huge with employment, with getting any kind of money, that uh, we discovered that um, somehow the, the public space is not available anymore. Everybody seems to be an expert on motherhood. Every, every person on the street can advise you how to take care of your child. But the expertise doesn't mean that mothers get any support, any social support. So they, it's very common for mothers to feel lonely, to, to, be, to actually feel socially excluded. Similarly, the paths of migrants in the host countries range from upward social mobility to spiraling deterioration. Their life chances depend on a combination of institutional and individual features and particularly on whether they have a permit to stay and of what type 
which defines their status in the country where they live and subsequently conditions their opportunities to access the labor market, the housing system, and the welfare institutions. Um, I came to Germany uh, uh, the year 1992, you know, invited from a, 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 a German uh, national theater in Essen. But the foreign department will not trust a, a, a Nigerian actor going to Germany to work. They tried every best possible, but everything proved abortive. Now, they stamped in my visa that I'm not allowed to work. If these people started looking for which ways to help me, after some times they get stalked. They said, we're sorry, we couldn't help you, so they dropped me. So you can see how my whole life depends on just this one sentence. So who the hell can get this thing out of my paper? Nobody! Das kann vielleicht noch jemand äh, begreifen, der vielleicht mal selber im Ausland irgendwo war, wo er dann äh, nicht unbedingt mit Englisch weiterkam und plötzlich dann irgendwo in der Bushaltestelle stand und eben so vielleicht mal ein Hotel suchte. Und sagt, was mache ich denn jetzt? Wen frage ich denn jetzt? Ich verstehe die Leute nicht. Ne? Muss ich jetzt hier draußen übernachten? Hier muss ich jetzt verhungern? Wo ist denn jetzt nächste, das nächste Geschäft? Das sind so ganz simple Sachen. Äh, es ist natürlich eben einfacher zu sagen, die müssen das, die müssen das, die müssen das. Ne? Wie viel Belastung auf die Leute zukommt. Ganz abgesehen davon, es sind, man darf es nicht vergessen, Asylsuchende und, und, und Bleibeberechtigte. Das heißt, die kommen aus Krisengebieten, die sind dann zum Teil sehr trau traumatisiert. Ja, und das ist ja nicht so, dass sie dann irgendwo sagen, ja, dann wechsle ich mal das Land, gehe mal für zwei Jahre nach Deutschland, weil es so schön ist, und dann gehe ich mal nach Frankreich. Paris war schon immer ein Wunsch. Ja. Das ist ja nicht so wie ein EU-Bürger, der das Land mal wechselt, weil er sagt, das finde ich ja spannend, ich habe mal Französisch in der Schule gemacht, ich möchte ganz gerne drei Jahre in Frankreich arbeiten. Die flüchten in ein unbekanntes Land, ja, die wurden irgendwo aufgenommen, nach bestimmten Schlüssel, die befinden sich irgendwo in Auffanglager, in ein Asylbewerberheim und müssen da erstmal zurechtkommen. Sehr salopp ausgesagt. Ja. Und dann, müssen die, dann werden die in die Gesellschaft hineingeworfen und dann wird dann gesagt, macht mal, ne. integriert euch mal ein bisschen, schnell Arbeit aufnehmen, sonst äh, ja, müssen wir gucken, wenn es dann bei euch im Land äh, besser geht, dann könnt ihr wieder zurückgehen. Ja. Also so einfach ist es ja nicht. Meine Mutter hat Krankenhaus, äh, Krankenschwester. Ja. Ja, und äh, weil sie jetzt in Syrien was passiert und meine Familie noch in Syrien leben, mhm. die leben ist echt schwer, alles teuer ja. und äh, muss, äh, muss suchen, was ich kann machen hier in Deutschland, mhm. wenn ich habe eine gute Arbeit, ich kann meine Familie helfen. It is this increasingly wide condition of citizens permanently floating between social integration and exclusion that can be described as social vulnerability. Vulnerability means not only a high probability of becoming poor or socially excluded, but also facing specific difficulties that are intrinsic to weak integration into the main social mechanisms of resource distribution, the labor market, the welfare system, and family organization. If you look at Birmingham, everywhere looks middle class. But if you really start to look underneath the surface, there's a lot of broken areas, there's a lot of disengagement, there's a lot of disenfranchised youth, there's a lot of businesses that are trying to run but are not becoming sustainable. And that's due to business rates going up, certain needs that they're required, they're not being fulfilled by the government. Unfortunately, we don't always get it right. I personally feel that the city could have done a lot more in terms of creating real change and we talk about social innovation and, and all these, these terminologies but on a grassroots level if you ask the young people they will tell you that these things have not necessarily had a major impact on their lives or created real change and it has been disappointing because a lot of them have not actually felt the impact and the effect that those policies that the government may have. Birmingham by all means is not perfect, but I think we are slowly getting there in terms of what we're trying to achieve. Um, but there were no miracles necessarily happening. And if there were, there was happening while I was sleeping. <laughs> not everybody is open to change and is a bit resistant, but when you see the amount of impact from a programme that we've changed people's lives, 
that it saved the state, so the economy, you know, from a political point of view, there's, there's mileage to be had. So we live or we work in a very diverse neighborhood, um, which is partly um, influenced by migration, which is also um, partly a very poor area. On the other hand, it's rich in forms of alternative culture. Um, we're facing also, of course, now processes of uh, gentrification, uh, social segregation, um, and we're trying to um, make a difference in this kind of context and to show people that the value of places is not just to be um, um, to be uh, figured out in monetary aspects but also in social and ecological aspects um, and we have a lot of um, let's say contradictions we have to face the very poor area with the highest rents right now um, we have alternative people who have a more ecological lifestyle at the same time we talk about environmental injustice because people are facing uh, at, in specific neighborhoods more environmental problems, um, health problems, and so on. Research has revealed that two groups of cities are dominant in specific areas of the continent. Inclusive cities are prevalent in Nordic as well as some of the richest continental countries, the Netherlands, Germany, and Switzerland. And vulnerable cities are concentrated in Central Eastern and Southern Europe. A third type of cities can be identified those with a selective labor market, which are scattered through different areas of Europe, including the UK, continental countries, and the northern regions of Mediterranean countries. The same trends endangering social cohesion were found both in the most and least competitive cities, though with different extension and intensity, hitting social groups that in the past had long been in a stable, integrated social position. It would be wrong, therefore, to conclude that social cohesion problems are due to either the rush of cities toward economic competitiveness or to the economic depression of specific areas. Some of these processes and trends have occurred both in cities with high economic performance and urban areas with a depressed low-performing and poorly attractive local production system. Indeed, urban strategies and outcomes to deal with social vulnerability actually differ very much throughout the European Union.